All right, it's 1040. We will begin our next presentation with Brittany Ackerland, who is the urban conservationist with the city of Davenport. She has over 10 years of experience in the field and has a passion for conservation and environmental protection with a degree in environmental science focusing on natural resource management and a background working with organizations such as the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Wyoming Game and Fish. She brings a diverse set of skills to the city of Davenport Clean Water Division. Brittany is a member of the Bi-State Conservation Network, an officer with the Quad Cities Earth Coalition, and facilitator of an environmental stewardship activity group called Duck Creek Wild. Brittany also likes to spend time training her dog to skewer, I think that's how you say it, as they explore the outdoors. So thanks, Brittany, and I will let you begin your presentation. All right. So there are multiple cost share opportunities with the city of Davenport and various departments here. Um, but since this is a stormwater um, conference here, then we're going to talk about our stormwater cost share opportunities. Um, so just a quick overview. Um, like I said, it's a, it's a recently developed um, partnership and opportunity from the city of Davenport that we're offering uh, landowners here. Um, it's main goals are to increase our local water quality um, and also promote healthier healthier urban land management the program allocates a small portion of our municipal stormwater fees to this grant fund um, it's twenty thousand annually mm. there's no cap on project costs uh, and grants are awarded on a first come first serve basis um, on any unused dollars, which we have had now um, since it's a new program and uh, not a lot of people, I guess, have applied or um, know of the program yet. So we have had dollars roll back into our stormwater fund um, to use towards city projects um, to help increase our, our water quality in Davenport. So eligible projects um, are anything that will increase stormwater quality and really we're looking to promote infiltration of stormwater into the groundwater system um, rather than having it run off into our um, streams and then essentially the Mississippi River. So soil quality restoration is one of those things, and that's a pretty common practice that uh, we're promoting through this program. Uh, that's aerating your soil to a, a, a deep time aeration, so like to six to eight inches is what we're looking for. Um, and then adding a, a layer of compost matter, organic matter to, to the soil to help increase the pore space um, and increase the amount of water your soil can then hold uh, for future rain events. Um, rain gardens, biocells, is, uh, that is a practice that can hold a, a fairly large amount of water. Um, so if you have a lot of land, a lot of runoff, Biocell could possibly be something that um, that you'd be interested in, but for the most part, homeowners' rain gardens generally uh, are the go-to. Um, tree plantings, native vegetation plantings, timber stand improvements, stream bank buffers. There are um, there's quite a list of things that are eligible for the cost share project and I mean this is not all inclusive either um, and if someone has a novel idea themselves that's going to increase infiltration and um, water water quality they, they can go ahead and and uh, apply with that idea we can go over things and and it could possibly uh, get funded so our application process so um, this is really important. No work should be conducted until the application gets approved. 
So that is key. We really need to get the application in, uh, get it approved, make sure everyone's on the same page with the plan. It has to get approved to make sure we have the, the dollars in the fund still to, to refund. It is a refund grant. Um, so the homeowners responsible for the upfront costs um, to a contractor or anything that if they're doing it in-house um, themselves, then they're, they're responsible for those costs. And then once the project's finalized, and the receipts are turned into the city, we then will issue a refund for 50% of the, the eligible costs. Uh, so no works to be conducted until the application gets approved. So that just makes, um, then we just confirm that we have the funds. It's, uh, it's good for both the homeowner and the city that way. Uh, You'll want to do, we want to do an initial consultation um, from the city. So we want to get out to your land. We want to go over your project, kind of uh, go over any concerns that we might have or we might see. Uh, we really want to get our boots on the ground and see what's going on and see what the city is going to be funding potentially before we uh, move forward and, and approve this. Then we, then we'll have the Homeowners submit the plans and the application. Um, there's also a W-9 form that they have to fill out in order for the city to add them as a vendor. And um, that allows us to cut you a check in the end. Uh, then the homeowner will get bids after we've approved. We're all on the same page with the plan. Uh, get some bids. We, we like to see uh, at least two usually three bids from various contractors, uh, just to have a, a variety and talk to some other people. Um, let's see, once we once the bids come in, I mean, it's, it's the homeowner's uh, decision whether, who they wanna go to, if they felt more comfortable with contractor B, even though his price is a little bit, higher, that's completely up to the homeowner. Um, if the funds are there and it's still, and it's reasonable, then the city can approve that. Um, and then once the contractor gets approved, or like I said, it can be done in house, but once everything gets approved, then you can go ahead and break ground and um, start cons construction. Depending on the project, we will have a timeline set um, for inspections that'll need to be done. So we'll send an inspector out, it's usually me, sometimes it's uh, another person in our department, just to make sure that the contractor is putting in your project the correct way uh, and it all meets our standards. So that just protects the homeowner and the city. Um, so we like to know what we're funding. Um, we'll do a final inspection once everything's finished, make sure it's all in order um, and if it's a rain garden, make sure that the water's running to it properly. And um, if it's permeable pavers, make sure that everything's everything's in order there. You know, just the normal final inspection on any any construction project, and then we will release the grant dollars. Um, so we'll start getting those processed, and you should receive your check in the mail within. 30 days of the final inspection. So that's kind of the whole process. Um, I did want to bring up the application. So I think I'm going to escape out of my presentation here and show you guys how to get to the application online um, from the Davenport's website. So it's kind of embedded in a few different pages. So cityofdavenportiowa.com, and then you will go to services, drop down menu here, water, and that is going to take you to a page with three different links here. We're going to go with stormwater runoff. Let me scroll down here 
And we have a link to financial aid. And this page here uh, explains more about the program. It links to the application. It links to uh, stormwater manual. Uh, it has a link to rain gardens. The Soil and Water Conservation District for more information. They also have a cost share program. Um, so and, you, and you can double dip, uh, mind you, but there are some constraints there. The homeowner is responsible for 25% of the cost um, if you do if you do double dip in the counties and the city's cost share programs, we still expect the homeowner to to uh, to pay 25% of the construction costs at, at least. Um, so here's the application. So it's pretty straightforward here. You do have to, um, you do have to have it notarized here. Um, so there's two areas actually that need notarized. One is on the uh, maintenance and repair agreement. So the city also uh, the city also likes to make sure our dollars are going to be uh, well spent for the long term. So we want to know that these projects that we're helping fund are going to be maintained. So this maintenance and repair agreement is um, it's it's to protect our interests um, and investment here that. Uh, that we're giving to this to the private landowners. Um, excuse me. So we just want you to know that that these practices aren't just to put in and go. They are, there will be especially with native landscaping. Um, there will be maintenance for them. So we'll go over all that depending on on what the project is. Um, go over the what those maintenance uh, maintenance tasks will be for the long term, and then and then make sure that you are able to to carry those things out. Um, and we put in a plan. So here's a inspection report because uh, we will inspect these uh, on a five-year rotation. I believe our maintenance and repair agreement is for 10 years. Um, so you could expect to have two, uh, two long-term inspections on your project. And so, yeah, that kind of goes over everything. Some general maintenance for different projects. And then the W-9 form, once you apply, I, will, I send out the W-9 forms. We don't have a link to those on the internet, on the website yet. So if your application gets approved and everything's good, then I can send you the W-9 form, form to fill out and resubmit to us in order to get you in as a vendor and get your payment. So an eligibility. So yeah, I've been saying private property owners, um, but it's private property owners that are subject to the Davenport's clean water utility fee. That's where we're generating these funds. So if, um, if you pay into that, you're eligible to receive this grant. Um, and like I mentioned, we're, we're looking to improve stormwater quality reduce the volume of runoff. Um, that's a nice stream buffer there that would be eligible for a cost share. Um, in the picture, projects are limited to one project per owner per year. Um, but it can, your project can have various others all wrapped in it. So if you have a project that you're doing storm 
if you're doing soil quality restoration and you want to put in a rain garden, that would all still be one project in total. So let's see, I went a little quick there. Uh, it is new, so we're still kind of working out our kinks uh, with everything. We've only had, let's see, three projects so far um, that we've funded. And they were small projects, so we did have some extra funds roll back into our stormwater account from last year. And we haven't had any approved projects for fiscal year 21. Um, so we still have a full fund and we are looking for people that want to utilize that. Does anybody have any questions? And I think in order to see anything that's typed in the chat, I have to stop sharing my screen. All right, yes, please. If you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the chat and I can relay those to Brittany. Um, while we're waiting for questions, oh, let's see. Oh, um, Amy wrote, can you, uh, let's see. Oh, does the city have cost share opportunities for stream bank stabilization? Yes, that is one of the eligible projects for sure. Um, yep, and like I said, there's no cap. So if the funds are there and your project gets approved, I mean, potentially you could use half of the dollars. That might that may change in the future. Um, but right now we didn't put a cap on the grant funding. So, so yeah, stream bank stabilization is, is eligible. All right. Can you talk a little bit about the native roots program that the city of Davenport has too? And if um, participants in native roots can use the cost share money to enroll? So Native Roots is a program that the city has um, for people that want to plant uh, native vegetation in their yards. And it just kind of helps us communicate with our city services department that the native vegetation is purposefully planted um, and it's not overgrown weeds. So, uh, that program is free to enroll in and native vegetations are eligible for cost share funding. So essentially they, uh, they would kind of work together uh, and yet you, you can enroll in both and the grant funds would be eligible to use to get into the native roots program. Okay, and do you enroll in that online or is there another application that they have to find? So there's an application on online for native roots. Um, if someone wanted to do a native vegetation planning through and use cost share dollars, we would uh, definitely let them know about native roots and get their, get their uh, land enrolled in that, especially if it's highly visible to, uh, to other community members, neighbors, um, just to let people know what that is. And, and like I said, it, that it's purposefully planted there. Um, you get a sign to put in your yard to kind of promote, promote native roots. Um, and that way then, then our city services department also know what it is. Um, yeah, it is the link to native roots is found um, back in the stormwater page. Back in water. Here, let's see. Here we go. So native roots is here. And it's free to enroll. Um, Here's a picture of the sign you get when you enroll. Uh, yeah, it's 
designed to recognize private property owners who have incorporated native plant material into their lawn and landscape. So we definitely get you hooked up with that if uh, native vegetation planting is, is uh, what your project is for the cost share. Um, where am I at here? So eligible projects and then uh, the link to the cost share too also has a link to the stormwater management manual where people can get more information on what these eligible projects are or kind of formulate possibly a, um, a project of their own or multiple projects and create your own little treatment train, so to speak, in your own backyard. So you could have the soil quality restoration, uh, a rain garden, you could run your downspouts to your rain garden, um, you could get funding uh, for a rain barrel, run your downspouts to a rain barrel, we, that's eligible. Um, Bioswales, um, just anything that is going to promote infiltration of your stormwater on your property rather than pushing it off down, downstream or to the, to the downhill neighbor. Um, we're trying to prevent that, increase infiltration, increase water quality, recharge our groundwater. So you said there's three programs that are three projects that have been funded so far. Can you describe what those were? Uh, sure. Um, so soil quality restoration, that's a pretty common one. Um, and then we had one rain garden and that was it. Two soil quality restorations and a rain garden. Um, the rain garden turned out really good. Uh, the, the homeowner that did that did run their downspouts and actually did some tiling in their yard too, but the tiling all led to the rain garden. Um, so that was eligible um, and it turned out really well. He's really happy with it all. Um, yeah. Awesome. All right, I will give a couple more seconds to see if anyone has a question for Brittany. There's a picture of a rain garden here. And we also, um, if it's not linked to on our website, we do have rain garden designs um, that we can share with people that are interested that include different species of plants that go well together and look good, good colors, um, different shapes that sort of thing. I'm trying to, the zoom is like right in the middle of my browser. Yeah. Brittany is wondering, are cultivars excluded in the Native Roots program? Um, we discourage them. We don't exclude them. Um, the Native Roots program, we've kind of settled on like a 70-30. So if you're 70% Native, 30% non, as long as there's no invasive species, then we'll, we'll enroll you. So non-natives, if there's a low percentage and they're not known to be aggressive or cause problems, then we, we're okay with those at a small percentage. And cultivars would be included in that. So my contact information, I can put in the chat. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. So let's see.
my emails in there and my desk number. So there's my contact information for anybody that's interested in doing an initial consultation. You can come out and do a site visit and we can go over everything. Um, we kind of, we can help um, determine what your best options are, um, depending on what the, what the problem is and the issue is, or if you just, if there is no problem and you just want to be good stewards and put in a rain garden, um, that's awesome too. And I would be more than happy to come and take a look and, and uh, help get you through this process. All right. Thanks so much, Brittany, for your presentation.